Here are five Lightroom tips that will transform you into a better and faster photo editor. And we're gonna jump straight into it with tip number one, and that is AI selections. So if you haven't already, go and update to the latest version of Lightroom, because once you do, you're gonna get instant access to the new AI selections. So firstly, how this works is we're gonna select the masking tab here, and then we're gonna go down to this new people section here. Here we can see Lightroom has taken a preview of our model here. And what we are gonna do is click on this icon, and here we can see Lightroom has made selections of all the individual features of our subject. So basically we can select any of the areas we wanna edit. So for this example, I'll select the face and the eyes and then check this separate mask box and then we're gonna click create masks. Now from here, we can see that we have automatically created three separate masks and we can now go into the editing panel and make any adjustments to these specific areas on our model. So before we would have had to use the brush tool and manually select these individual areas. So this new update alone will save you hours in the editing room. Also for all your event and wedding photographers, this new feature will also allow you to select specific people in your group photos. So as we can see for this photo, Lightroom has detected all four subjects and I can now hover over each person and easily decide which model I wanna make edits to all with a single click. Within these new AI selections, we also now have the ability to easily select a background in our photos. And we can do this by again opening up the mask options and then clicking on this select background button here. And we can see with just one click, Lightroom has created a clean selection of the background. And for portraits, I usually like to darken the background slightly and then also bring down the detail to help my model pop out of the photo even more. So again, if you haven't yet, be sure to update to the latest version of Lightroom after this video so that you can get access to all these new features because as you can see, they will save you hours in the editing room. But now moving on to my next tip and that is using adaptive presets. And basically these are pre-made edits that Lightroom has created that target certain areas of our photos. So to access them, just go over to the preset panel and then scroll down until you see these adaptive presets. So if we open up the portrait tab, we can see they have different presets like enhanced portrait, which automatically brightens up areas of your subject's face. And we've also got things like enhancing your model's eyes or adding texture to your subject's hair. On top of presets for portraits, we also have some options for the sky in our photos. So as you can see, these presets are great when you are wanting to speed up your editing workflow and they can also help you get a base look that you can then start working from. But now moving on to my next Lightroom tip and that is the tone curve. So the tone curve is this tool here and it's the best way to adjust the contrast and overall tone of your photos. And I personally believe it's one of the most powerful tools inside of Lightroom. But with that being said, it was one of the hardest for me to get my head around. So in this video, I'm gonna try my best to explain it as simply as possible. So firstly, the tone curve basically represents all the information that is contained in our photo and it's split into the blacks, shadows, mid-tones, highlights, and whites. So this area on the left represents the darkest parts of your shot and the right represents the brightest parts. And to use the tone curve, all we need to do is click and make points across this line. And then we can pull these points up to make that area brighter or pull down to make it darker. And how I personally like to use this tool is by first adding three points. So one in the shadows, one in the midtones, and one in the highlights. And then from here, I like to raise this black point to create this faded out look. And then I like to drag this point down to bring back some contrast in the shadows. Next, I'll keep this middle point where it is to anchor the curve. And then I'll bring down this white point to help create more of a matte look. And then lastly, I'll raise this point to bring back some contrast to the highlights. So this style of edit is called an S-curve and it's a great place to start for beginners. But just keep in mind that every photo is different so don't be afraid to get creative with this tool. But before we jump into the next tip, 
if you're getting some value from this, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that more people just like you can improve their photo editing skills. But now moving on to the next Lightroom editing tip and that is creating virtual copies. So this is something I use every day because by creating virtual copies of certain photos, you're then able to experiment and make adjustments to photos without ruining an edit. So for example, let's say I've just finished editing this photo here, but I'm curious to see how it would look in black and white. So I could just right click on the photo and then hit create create virtual copy. And just like that, Lightroom has created an exact copy of my edited photo. And from here, I'm just gonna hit reset and then slap on one of my black and white presets. And just like that, I now have two different edits that I can then choose from. So personally for me, I usually create copies for different edits and different crops for Instagram and for my website. But now moving on to my next editing tip, and this is one I use on pretty much every photo, and that is selective editing. And selective editing is basically when we're gonna affect certain parts of our photos, and we do this by using the different masking options inside of the masking tab. So personally for me, I usually mix the linear gradient with the radial gradient, and when done correctly, these masks will take your photos to that next level. Here are some before and afters of some recent edits with and without these different masks. And as you can see, these selective edits work for all kinds of photography. With that being said, if you wanna see a full step-by-step -step tutorial on how I edited this photo using selective editing, then you can click the video on the screen to check that out and I'll see you there.